We auto start Direwolf at boot. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. When it comes to APRS, Packet, and Direwolf, probably the most often asked question is how do we start Direwolf when a system boots up. Today, I want to walk you through three different methods. I'll save my favorite until the end. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first version of this. We'll just go ahead and open the terminal window. Let me make that just a little bit bigger for you guys. Before we start, we do want to verify that Direwolf will start on its own. So I'm just going to run Direwolf and verify that everything comes up. If you have an error right here, you need to go figure that out first because if it won't work here, it's not going to work on a uh, auto start at boot. Once we know that this is working, we can just press Control C to get out of that and we can clear that screen. Next, in our home directory, we want to run the ls command. And you'll see that we have a script here that gets installed with Direwolf, and it's called dw-start.sh. And that's the one we're going to use for this particular way of starting it. So what I want to do is I want to call that with a cron job. So to create that cron job from the terminal, let's just run crontab space hyphen e. And that will allow us to add a new cron job. Now, if it's your first time running a uh, cron tab, you may get asked which editor you want to use. I'm using the nano editor in this particular case. So I want to put a comment right at the beginning here. And a comment is anything that begins with the pound sign. So we're just going to say start direwolf at boot. And then right below that, I'm going to paste in this line here. It says at reboot sleep for 10 seconds, and then start this particular script. Now, the path is important here. You'll notice that it's forward slash home, forward slash pi, and that's because my username on this test box is pi. If your username is different, you're going to have to change this to match your username. Once we've got this entered in, I'm just going to press Control S to save it, and then Control X to escape out of this. And one thing to point out here, your username is right over here to the left of the at symbol when you open up the terminal. So if yours is something different uh, from Pi, then you'll need to go and change that path in the cron job. Now that we've made that change, let's just go ahead and reboot the machine. So sudo reboot. And we'll be right back as soon as this machine comes back online. Now, you may have to wait 30 seconds or so, but after the machine boots, you should get this terminal window here. Uh, and that delay is because I added that sleep 10 to the command. I just find that I have better luck running this when I add that uh, sleep command before actually starting this script at boot. Now, the one thing I don't like about doing this particular method is if I close this terminal window here, I am actually going to kill Direwolf, so I have to leave this running. Now, if you're just running a Digipeter or something like that on this particular machine, that may not be a big deal for you at all. I prefer another method, and I'm going to save my favorite until the end. But I do want you to watch right over here in the right corner where it says Direwolf Active. As soon as I close this terminal window, it's going to say Direwolf Off. And there is no automatic restart here, and that's the reason I don't prefer this method. Now, before moving on, I did go ahead and go back into CronTab and remove that job that we just put in there. The next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at starting this from System D. Now, I don't prefer this method because that's going to require Direwolf to run as root. And running it as root is not a great idea, but I still want to show this method because I see it popping up online from time to time. So let's go ahead and move to cd space forward slash etsy forward slash systemd forward slash system. We'll go ahead and press return there. And next I'm going to run sudo nano direwolf.service. 
go ahead and press return. Now, my file here is already filled out. If you would like, you can pause the video right here if this is a method you want to try to use. And you'll just go ahead and fill out the information that you see here on my screen. Now, you will notice right here in the execute start, I am using screen to start uh, Direwolf. And I'll show you guys uh, how to install screen if you don't have it on your system here in just a second. But pause the video right here. Go ahead and type this out if you'd like. And then I'll show you how to start and stop the direwolf.service. Once you've got everything typed in, you would just press Control S to save and Control X to get out of that file. Now, before I show you how to start Direwolf, if you don't have screen installed, you would just need to run sudo apt install screen. And that would get uh, screen installed. It's already installed on this particular system, so I'm not going to run that particular command. Once you have created that direwolf.service file, we need to run sudo systemctl daemon hyphen reload. And we'll go ahead and press return. That will let the system know that that uh, new service file was created. And we'll need to do that before we try to start it. Now that we've let the system know that the direwolf.service file is there, we can start that with sudo space system ctl start direwolf direwolf dot service if we go ahead and press return you can watch right over there on the right hand side of the screen and direwolf should go green for us indicating that it is up and running at any time if you want to see what's going on in the direwolf terminal you can run sudo space screen space hyphen r direwolf Go ahead and press return, and that will bring you into the terminal where Direwolf is running. You can press Control and A, followed by the letter D, and you will get, and that D was a delta, and you will get this right here where it says detached from uh, Direwolf. So it's still running in the background. Again, we'll just run that same command that we ju did just a second ago. And that will take us right back in. So screen is a really neat little application to allow you to go into and out of different things that you may have running on your system. Now, that just temporarily starts it. It does not start it at boot. In order to get it to start at boot, first I'm going to stop the service. So we'll just run sudo systemctl stop direwolf.service. You'll notice now right over here on the right hand side of the screen, direwolf is red again. To enable this to start at boot, we're going to run sudo systemctl enable direwolf.service. We'll go ahead and press return. You'll get this little message here that it's created a symlink and now direwolf should start at boot. Let's go ahead and reboot the machine and verify that everything is working as we expect. Once the Pi reboots, we can look right over here uh, at Conky and see that Direwolf is active. Let me show you a couple of ways we can double check that though. We can run PID of space Direwolf. And that should return a number. This is our process number that Linux assigned to Direwolf when it started. So that's one way that we can verify it. We can also run that uh, screen command. So sudo space screen space hyphen r Direwolf. And go ahead and press return. And that brings us back into the terminal window where Direwolf is running. So I'm going to press Control A to get out of that and D to detach. Again, not a solution that I recommend because I don't like running Direwolf as root, but it is a possibility. Now let me show you guys my favorite way to do this. Now, I do want to mention before we move on that I have stopped and disabled that direwolf.service file so it doesn't interfere with our next method. To do that, I ran this command here first, which is sudo systemctl stop direwolf.service, followed by systemctl disable direwolf.service. That takes that file 
that we created for direwolf out of the loop and it won't interfere with our next method this next one let's go ahead and go back into cron tab so we'll run cron tab space hyphen e and go ahead and press return and like i said this is by far my favorite one of the three so I gave it a quick comment to let me know exactly what was happening. That's that start direwolf at boot that you see. And then you'll see the command that's actually going to start it. That's that at reboot. We're going to sleep for 10 seconds. Then you see the two ampersands. Next, we're going to run screen dash s direwolf dash d dash m. And we're going to give it the full path to direwolf. And I'll show you guys how to look up these full paths here in just a second. So we do need the full path when we're calling something from crime. Once you've got that information entered in, I'll just go ahead and press Control S to save it and Control X to get out of it. Now, if you're not sure of exactly where a file is located, we can type where is space I'm going to look at screen first. So in this case, where is screen? Let's go ahead and press return, and you'll see that screen is in the user bin directory. Let's run that same command, this time for direwolf. So where is space direwolf? Go ahead and press return, and in this case, it's installed in user local bin. If yours happens to be in a different location, you will need to update that cron job. But now that we've got that cron job loaded, let's go ahead and reboot the machine one last time. Now, using this method, you don't see any terminal windows open on the screen after we have booted. But if we look right down here in the conky window, we can see that Direwolf is active. Again, I'm going to open up the terminal window. I'm going to run PID of Direwolf. And again, that will show you the process ID number that Linux assigned to Direwolf when it started. If we want to take a look at that Direwolf terminal window, we can run screen space hyphen R Direwolf. Notice in this particular case, I did not run sudo screen. And that's because Direwolf and screen are not being run as root. And that's the reason I prefer this particular method. Let's go ahead and press return there. And you'll see that we get our Direwolf terminal window. I'm going to press control A followed by D, Delta. That will give me that detached message right here. Now, keep in mind though, if Direwolf crashes with this particular method, there is nothing to auto restart it like it is if we used system D. So there's a look at three different ways you can start Direwolf at boot. I'm sure these are not the only three, but just three that I wanted to show you guys today. Each definitely has their pros and cons, and you just have to decide what works best for your particular setup. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.